in my practice what I'm working mostly with is like algorithms and especially the internet and what I'm interested in is um, over the years how the internet has become something that is omnipresent and how this is changing like our lives and especially I'm interested these days in the like kind of labor that it brings to every aspect of our life and ex exploitation. I got interested in search for image I think when it came out five years ago, search for image is based on the, the archive of Google, which is created by us uploading pictures and tagging these pictures, which is kind of a hidden process as being labor. The first thing that happened to me that I found interesting was I put in, into it an image of a dog and I got images of naked men. And this is something that usually not, not happens on Google, it's always very expected. So I thought, okay, this is a way to, to navigate it that is really uncommon. So Search for Image Life is a work which is based on Google Search for Image. Basically, um, I wrote a program that takes an image, searches with that image, takes the first most similar search result and searches with that again and recreates uh, like some kind of like a, a video, one frame after another. And you start with something and from there you travel through the whole Google archive. In the work here at the gallery, uh, Search for Image Live Lena, it's starting with a photograph of the Swedish model Lena, which appeared in the 70s in the Playboy. And it got to fame because uh, it's it was used as a test image for compression algorithms to transmit images over the internet in the most effective way. And to date, it's still being used as a, as a test image. Two um, scientists, female scientists, they were kind of fed up with the whole thing of always looking at Lena and already being in a very male context. And so they contacted Fabio, his agent, and asked, for the permission to use it in one of their papers, which I think was a very nice gesture, which I liked, yeah. So in an attempt to point towards the discussion that's also happening in the field of academia, that there are some problems with that image maybe, um, I'm starting with a different image on a daily basis. So one day it's with a photograph of Lena, on the day after that it's starting with a photograph of the Italian model Fabio. And so I'm trying to point to that discussion happening there too. So when you start with Lena and you run it on a daily basis, the ways it takes through the archive, they are different on a daily basis, but still there is like something that happens all the time, I would say. And it, it's always going to these powerful male, like the leaders of some sort, and then connects them to some random Facebook profile image. Yeah, so that is, it's nice how these things are like linked together, also going from a baby to an old man and back to to baby. So running this on a daily basis for, I think it's three months, uh, it's gonna be a few thousand per day. So it's gonna be a huge database, but it's restarted every night to start with Lena or Fabio in the morning. And it's also different when you look at it on your computer sitting there to having it like here in public and you walk by the gallery and it's really flashing there and draws you in. I was really happy with that. So the second project, which is kind of related also to Search for Image Live, is called Decision Space and it lives on the gallery's website. People in all, every click they do, they actually contribute something to an archive that is then used by Google to make some money. So in this case, Decision Space is, a, I would say, an overlay on the website. So once you hover over an image, you get four terms, problem, solution, future, and past, and you can vote for an image to be in one of these four categories. And then in a second step, when I've created this data set, which is based on all the photos that are on the website, all the work that the artists put into these photos and all the clicks that the visitors put there. I can use this to synthesize new images, like new works based on these concepts. And then on the website, I will have 
the produced images, but I also, and that's something I do regularly, is to not just have it on a screen, but to change the medium, to actually have proper prints, to refer back to the original photos. The goal with these prints is to again bring them into an exhibition and to, to point back and in a way also say basically I didn't work that much and just like took the work from all the other people and used it in a way that Google would use it or all the other systems that do it. What I'm hoping to, to happen for this project is to kind of not start a discussion but to make people a bit of aware of what is happening online with every click you do and now with the internet moving to like every part of our lives that everything you do kind of becomes work for somebody else and how you're being exploited in some ways you don't notice and also it's also a kind of gesture towards the artist that I'm basing my work on which I'm really grateful I can kind of do this this gesture.